Once again, this is my 30-something uh, trip here. The difference is <coughs> I'm going to try as much as possible to keep my mouth shut and listen to the three local guides we have. We have three indigenous people with us. One of them is an official archaeology western school tour guide, but the other two are indigenous wisdom keepers, and they will have insights about this place, Machu Picchu, that I and you have never heard of. <laughs> yeah. La montaña Putukusi uh -huh. es una montaña sagrada. Es el altar importante. Okay. It was a sacred mountain and this was the main altar. Okay. That's what is uh, Putukusi, this mountain. Okay. En cual por gratitud los abuelos incas construyeron las dos montañas que están aquí, ¿no? En conmemoria al abuelo Putukusi, ¿en cuál está? Mati Chumpi, Mati Chumpi, Maki Chumpi, Mati Chumpi, Maki Mati Mati Chumpi. Exacto, se okay. llama Frente Dorada y Chumpi Faja Dorada. Ok. Well, uh, the translation of Mat of this place is uh, Mati Chumpi, which means the the golden belt, you know, basically because this uh, in, in gratitude because uh, this mountain, the other ones built this mountain, this one and the little one and the highest one there, which uh, would be the place where the young ones uh, chew it, the coca leaf. Uh -huh. That's what is the translation. Okay. To chew the coca leaf, or yes. And the Huayna Pichu is called Huayna Pichan Intuta, which significa the hombre joven iniciado con la hoja de coca, masticando o saboreando. Es la palabra. Pichar es eso lo que nosotros tenemos. Hoja y par. Okay. Okay, just to clarify, uh, pichar is a Quechua word which describes the act when the local ones chew it, the yeah. coca leaf, and that's precisely what means this mountain. Why uh, not uh, pichar? Because means, pichar means uh, chew it, but chew it just the coca leaf. That's roughly the translation. So the thing okay, is, great. it depends on who you talk to and what their interpretation is. Because as we've heard, the mountain in behind now Huayna Picha means young chewing of coca leaves, whereas most translations are Huayna Pichu, or Picchu, which means uh, the young mountain. The one name you do not want to call this place is Machu Picchu. It's Machu Picchu. Machu means ancient. Picchu, Picchu means mountain. Machu Picchu means old penis. I have one question, and that's that almost everyone believes that one high Inca called Pachacutec was responsible for building this city. My question is, what evidence is there that it is from his time and not another time? 
Well, uh, the anthropologists and the engineers uh, concluded that uh, the engineers and anthropologists estimate that the, this place was built at the late 1300s or, or early 1400s. I mean, it cannot be accurate. So, and that's the, precisely the period where Pachacutica ruled the, the empire. So, which, uh, if this uh, assumption is the right one, I mean, the engineers and archaeologists, this place should be built by Pachacutic. Okay. That's why. It's just also, I've noticed that uh, almost any place that is not fully understood and is sophisticated is given the designation built by Pachacutic as if they u simply use that term because they can't honestly explain through tangible results that that's the case. <laughs> well, that's correct. Well, it's just have a look at this place, how, how it was built. It follows, uh, it follows this philosophy. So the real problem I have with the idea that the Inca built this entire city is this is clearly a Bronze Age culture doing this work. But that isn't. This is white granite containing a lot of um, quartz crystal. Quartz is 7 out of 10 on what is called the most scale of hardness. Bronze tools can't even touch this material. This, they could simply whack with uh, hard stones and, and shape them and fill in with this clay, but there's no way they could have done this. So again, my belief is that we're looking at the core of Machu Picchu as being an ancient megalithic city built by a culture that had to have had sophisticated technology. So that vibration that you heard inside that little room was on purpose. And that is the theory behind why the super tight construction was done. It wasn't done because this is a temple. It's, it was done by an older culture because they wanted every stone in perfect contact with each other because that room was supposed to vibrate at that, with that tone. And that tone is the tone of Mother Earth not the octave, a lower octave. So that's why the core of Machu Picchu, I and other, others believe, was found by the Inca, possibly the great ruler Pachacutec. And he had the capability, because he was the high ruler and had so many people that obviously were working for him, that he said, build me a city around that central core. No archaeologist I know of um, will agree with that, but no archaeologist I know of has brought engineers and stonemasons and geologists, like I and others have done here, to look at it. And they simply say the Inca could not have built possibly 5% of Machu Picchu. They built the rest of it, but not the central core. There's something very I'm enigmatic going on here. I'm not sure, but it was because the commercial, the beer commercial, the local commercial, so the crane is the one with the ship, that's what matters. So what you can see is the majority of Machu Picchu is constructed of relatively small stones glued together with clay mortar. So why would there be other ones which are megalithic and so tight-fitting you can't fit a human hair in between? Uh, again, the conventional explanation by archaeologists is because those buildings with the megalithic blocks and the tight-fitting uh, stone were so special because they were for religious purposes and the rest were simply houses so they didn't matter. But I find that a really lame way of trying to explain what to me is more likely a situation whereby 
some ancient culture that had sophisticated technology, perhaps even beyond what we have, created the core of this place. Then the Inca found it, and then they built the city around it because they saw the impressive nature of what the ancient ones had. And also, if the Inca were so good at construction in terms of uh, being able to do the megalithic work, then why are the staircases so awful? Again, most of Machu Picchu has not been reconstructed. Uh, it's been left the way it was found in 1911 in order to save it as a, almost like a time capsule. And the megalithic work is so tight-fitting that in some cases you can't fit a human hair in between. Whereas here you see this Inca work is, it's okay kind of construction in the front, but they even filled in the center as a faster way of building than having the whole thing made out of stone. The only reason we can see this is because of the damage over time. Uh, it's the result of maybe many, many earthquakes um, and just natural wear and tear since the city was abandoned uh, about 500 years ago. And Machu Picchu is such, or Picchu, sorry, is such a labyrinth of rooms and staircases. There is no way that in the amount of time that the average tourist sees this, for example, three hours, that they will ever get an appreciation of how complicated this place is. Hundreds of rooms and passageways and terracing and possibly secret chambers, as Wilco is about to show us. So this is the Pachamama, Brian, the temple of Pachamama. Yeah. Machu Picchu or Machu Picchu, simply that the Inca built a city on the edge of the jungle that was lost for 500 years. The question is who built the ancient core? Could it have been, as oral tradition states, people called the Pirwas or the Viracochans thousands of years prior to the Inca? That is what we're still trying to find out. So I suggest you definitely come and Visit this astonishing enigma yourself, and of course, my books and videos are there to assist you in this process. From the Pueblo of Machu Picchu, this is Brian Forrester on HiddenIncaTours.com.